What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and a welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Kresimir Kosik. Now, this request came from a subscriber of mine. And initially, I of course I've heard of Kresimir Kosik, but I never did the extensive research into his international career or really who he was as a personal in his personal life. I just kind of knew him as being drafted by the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, for those of you who don't know, Krasimir Kosick was born November 26, 1948. And he was from Yugoslavia. He was a Croatian. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, let me break it down. So Yugoslavia is no longer a country. Uh, this was kind of today been broken up. But um, today, the, one of the areas there is known as Bosnia Herzegovina. Um, but this area has a couple of different ethnic groups: the Croatians, Bosnians, Serbians, and even today, this area is a very big basketball draft scouting location. Um, Bo uh, Bosnia especially has a lot of tall basketball players. And we're seeing a lot of Croatian, Bosnian, Serbian players today. Um, somebody want to fact check me on this. I'm just guesstimating. But I would guess that the Yugoslavia, uh, when it was a country and what it became, all the individual countries – probably has produced the most NBA talent in terms of international countries. Maybe France might have a case in that. I know there's also a lot of Nigerian players, but I think probably the most NBA players have come from here and in terms of outside of the United States. But anyways, Gresimir Kosic, he was 6'11", 212, and he was, from what I've gathered, the footage I've seen of him, he could play all five positions. He was very fast on his feet. Um, he had the foot speed of a guard. He could pass like a guard. Great defender. Now, he's uh, unfortunately no longer with us. Um, like I said, he was born in Croatia. He was born in Zagreb. In 1948, he was raised in Zadar, and in 1965, he started his club basketball playing career by playing with KK Zadar. While playing with Zadar, he won the three Yugoslav League titles in 1965, 1967, and 1968. And what kind of intrigued me about his story is, when you read about the history of the NBA, there's not a lot of international players early on like there is today. Um, I kind of attributed Hakeem Olajuwon as being the guy. I'm not saying he's the first, but I think he, Hakeem Olajuwon kind of set the stage, uh, set the bar, the standard of what international players would be. You know, a lot of times after Hakeem Olajuwon, people were looking all over the world for talent, seeing where they could draft. But it's kind of interesting reading international player stories before Hakeem Olajuwon. So in the summer of 1968, Kosic was in a European team with Finnish player Vico Vanillo. And Vanino, a student at Brigham Young University, told him about life in college and invited him to play for the BYU Cougars. Kosic accepted the invitation and moved to the United States in 1969. In his freshman year, he played 12 games for the freshman team, averaging 17.4 points per game, 12.6 rebounds per game. And in his sophomore year, he averaged 15.1 points per game and 12.6 rebounds per game, leading BYU to the 1971 WAC Championship. In his junior year, he led the team to the WAC championship, averaging 22.3 points per game and 12.8 rebounds per game. And he's being awarded All-American honors. As a senior, he averaged 20.2 points per game and 9.5 rebounds per game, 
and was given the All-American Honors by the Presidential, I'm sorry, by the United Press International. His college career averages are 18.9 points per game and 11.8 rebounds per game. Now, the Marriott Center at BYU was built during Kosich's career at BYU. The Smithfield House could not hold in all the fans. Um, he, put a lot of, he put a lot of asses in the seats. Kosich. A lot of people wanted to come see him. Like I said, because of his athleticism. I don't know if that's the right term. Just his play style. He could do so much. You know? Uh, maybe this isn't a... This is kind of a stretch, maybe, to compare him. But I, I think his play style... I'm not saying he's as good as him, but... His play style was pretty similar to Nikola Jokic. Because uh, Kosic, he could hit outside shots. He could handle the ball like a guard. He could pass off, you know. But he was also a good shot blocker. And at the 1973 NBA draft, Kosic was picked by the Los Angeles Lakers in the fifth round, 84th overall. He rejected several professional offers from the NBA and ABA and returned to Croatia, where he again played for the KK Zadar from 1973 to 1976. He was responsible for bringing the first American to play for Yugoslav team. He brought Doug Richards to Zadar. And this is something, too, I should bring up. You know, a lot of times, um, as Americans, I'm an American, um, we don't look at uh, other countries as being up to our level in terms of basketball talent. And what what we got to realize is there is really good international leagues all over Europe. And there's African leagues, Asian leagues. And a lot of times NBA players retire and go play overseas. And they can make a good, honest living doing this, you know. Uh, I think it was Stefan Marbury who went and played in China. And he had a pretty good career there. God Sham God had a pretty good uh, career in China. And I wish I could say that he played in the NBA. Um, Kosic, I think, would have been really cool coming into the Lakers because this was he was drafted the year that Will Chamberlain retired. So what would have happened, do you think, if he would have took over? Do you think he could have been, you know, the Lakers' next big star? Or do you think when Kareem came there a few years later, do you think him and Kareem would have made a good duo? You know, it's a good what if. And he had a pretty good national team career. Kosick made his national team debut for Yugoslavia at the age of 17 after being called up to the senior team by head coach Renko Zarevic. I'm sorry if I butcher these names. He won a silver medal at the 1967 FIBA World Championship, at the 1968 Summer Olympics, he won another silver medal. Kosick holds the records for playing the most games for a national team. He played 303. And he was a part of three generations and holds the most basketball awards slash medals in Croatia. And I just want this to be known. Kosic is the Michael Jordan or LeBron, whatever word you want to use. Wilt Chamberlain of Croatia, slash those Slavic countries. Uh, he played in for the, uh, he played in four Summer Olympic Games, 1968, 1972, and 1976, and 1980 in Moscow. When he led his team as a captain to a gold medal, he previously had led Yugoslavia to a pair of FIBA World Championship gold medals at the 1970 FIBA World Championship and at the 1978 FIBA World Championship. And he was also pretty well known as a coach. He first coached the Zar team upon returning from BYU in 1973. However, he found it too exhausting being a coach, club director, and a player. And in 1976, he coached uh, the Brest team and was the same time player for Zadar. Both teams played in the same league. Following his playing days, Kosic returned to coaching, and he had led his uh, and he had led the singer uh, the senior team to the silver medal in the nineteen eighty eight Summer Olympics in Seoul, and he also to a bronze medal in nineteen eighty six FIBA World Championship. 
and the 1987 Euro basket. Even though no one agreed with him, Kosic insisted on including young players in the national team and was the first to give them a chance. This included Dino Rada. I'm sure a lot of people know who that guy or don't know who that guy is. He played on the Celtics in the 90s. And one of the and two other big names that I'm sure a lot of people know, Vladi Divac and Tony Kukoc. He also recognized a young talent in Dejan Bordadoga, whom he helped set off his career. And off the court, he's known as um, he turned down coaching offers so that he could help Croatia during wartime in the early 1990s. He was positioned in the embassy of Croatia to the USA, and he was a deputy ambassador in Washington, D.C. He was the only person at the time to help uh, in fixing misconceptions about the war. His strong connections helped Croatia and receive the Freedom Award for contributing to advancing peace and reconciliation to all ethnic groups in Croatia. And he was a pretty outspoken member of the Jesus Christ and Latter-day Saints, or the Mormons, as they're called. Um, because when he went to Brigham Young, he converted to Mormonism. Um, I'm not sure if there's even any Mormons in Croatia. Like, I'm talking like a good-sized population. Someone would correct me on, on that. That'd be nice. Um, but uh, he became a missionary back in his home country. I'm not quite sure, like I said, if they have a big community there. And also, he became a writer. He was known to carry a suitcase full of books wherever he traveled. He was a athletical. He was an atypical athlete, reading and analyzing nothing. He always had the latest gadget at hand and was obsessed with technology. He listened to classical music and loved theater and arts. In the 1980s, he started writing his autobiography, which was never actually completed, which is a travesty in my book. His daughter Anna published his writings in May 2019 in Croatia under the book name Play, Believe, Live. The book gives an insight of Kosik's sports career and theories about sports in general. Now, unfortunately, following the years of his basketball career, like I said, he worked at the embassy. But in 1991, or I'm sorry, in 1995, he died in Baltimore, Maryland of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He was buried in a cemetery back in his hometown in Croatia, in Zagreb. People came from all over the former Yugoslavia to his funeral, even though at the time there was a war going on. He was survived by his wife and two daughters, and he also has a son. So, to me, it's really unfortunate we didn't get to see him play, but hey, he made a good name for himself overseas. And he paved the way for a lot of European players to come. So let's talk about his honors. He's a Croatian National Basketball Cup and a KK Zadar home arena are named after him. Uh, he's a six-time participant in the FIBA All-Star Game, playing on the side of European selection roster. He's one of the top medalists in the FIBA World Cup four medals. He was named the FIBA Euro Basketball MVP in 1971 and 75. He was named the Croatian Sportsman of the Year in 1980. He was inducted to the BYU Hall of Fame in 1983. He's named to the FIBA 50 Greatest Players in 1991. He's, he received a Freedom Award in Utah in 1993. And he was awarded the FIBA Order of Merit in 1994. He was enriched into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 1996. He was inducted into the Utah Basketball Hall of Fame in 2001. He was awarded into the Croatian Lifetime Achievement in Sport in 2002. On, four, on March 4, 2006, Kosic became the second men's basketball player to have his jersey retired by BYU, the other one being Danny Ainge. In 2006, he enriched into the College Basketball Hall of Fame in 2007, he was enriched into the FIBA Hall of Fame. He was named one of the 50 greatest EuroLeague contributors in 2008. Uh, so, his impact 
is monumental for European basketball players. I'm sure there's a whole generation of Euro basketball players, like I said, Tony Kukoc, Vladi Divac, who grew up idolizing Chris Mirkosic. And I think he's super, 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 super underrated in his contributions because we saw what European players did in the NBA. They changed the style of play in a way. Um, You know, a lot of these Euro dudes could shoot the three. They could pass like guards, you know, like Vladi Divac, Nikola Jokic. So had he not been around, you know, I'm sure a lot of these guys probably wouldn't have been around after him. He paved the way for them. And it's kind of sad how little recognition he gets in terms of fans in the U.S., you know. And it's not really their fault. You know, he didn't play an NBA game, so I'm sure that's why a lot of players or a lot of fans don't know who he is. And I think if you ask anybody over in uh, southeastern Europe, you know, like the Balkans and those former uh, Yugoslavian countries, I'm sure a majority of them know who he is. And... Like I said, I really wish he could have played in the NBA. I know it would have altered history because you wouldn't have got to see all these great Euro stars come over here. Or maybe you would have, but I'm saying his impact might have made some of them not even want to come. Maybe his inter- maybe his basketball career over there sparked some of them's interest in basketball. So we don't know what the butterfly effect would be, but what I would have liked to have seen is him go to the Lakers and see him play with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in the 70s. So, that's his story. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching.